Setting up a proper development environment on Windows used to be a real headache. You've probably heard that it's slow, complicated, but what if I told you that's completely wrong now? Thanks to WSL2, installing Docker on Windows is not only easy, but it creates one of the most powerful and seamless development workflows. I'm going to walk you through every single step. Let's get started. All right, before we dive in, let's do a quick pre-flight check to make sure your system is ready. You'll need a 64-bit version of either Windows 11 or Windows 10. And for Windows 10 users, this is really important. You need to be on version 21, H2, or newer. This is a common stumbling block, so double-check that if you're on Windows 10. The other two non-negotiables are having the WSL2 feature enabled and hardware virtualization turned on in your computer's BIOS. If you're not sure about the WSL2 part or need to get it installed, I have a separate detailed guide that walks you through that entire setup. I've linked it in the description below. Okay, with the requirements out of the way, let's verify our WSL installation. Open the search bar and launch the command prompt. Inside the terminal, type WSL-version and press enter. As long as your version number starts with a 2, it confirms you are running a modern version of WSL2, which is exactly what Docker needs. With that confirmed, we are ready to get Docker. Open your favorite browser and head over to Google to search for Docker. The first result, docker.com, is what you want. We're looking for Docker Desktop, which is the application that lets us build and run containers right on our machine. On the Docker Desktop page, click the Download Docker Desktop button. It will show you a few options. Since we're on a standard Windows PC, we'll choose the Download for Windows option with the AMD64 architecture. Once the installer is downloaded, go ahead and run it. The configuration screen is the most important step. Make sure the Use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V box is checked. This is the recommended and most performant option. I also like to keep the Add Shortcut to Desktop option checked for easy access. Then, click OK. The installer will now unpack all the necessary files. This can take a minute or two depending on your system. Once it's done, a restart is required to complete the installation. Go ahead and click Close and Restart. When your computer boots back up, you'll be greeted with the Docker subscription service agreement. For personal use, learning, or small businesses, it's free to use. Click Accept to continue. Docker will then ask you to sign in. You don't need an account just to run containers locally. So for now, we'll just click Skip in the top right corner. And here we are. This is the Docker desktop dashboard. You can see in the bottom left corner that the Docker engine is starting up. That little green whale means everything is running smoothly. Now, how do we know it's really working? We need to run a container. Open up a terminal, I'm using Windows Terminal here, and type the command docker run hello world. What you're seeing here is the Docker client talking to the Docker engine. It couldn't find an image named hello world on your machine, so it automatically pulled it down from Docker Hub. And there it is, that hello from Docker message confirms our installation is a success. And if we look back at our Docker desktop dashboard, you can see our Hello World container is listed. It ran its job and exited. It's that simple. That's a great test, but let's try something more practical. Let's run an interactive Ubuntu Linux container. Type docker run dash it Ubuntu bash. The dash it flags tell Docker we want an interactive terminal. Just like before, Docker sees we don't have the Ubuntu image locally, so it pulls it down. And just like that, look at the prompt. We are now inside a fully functional Ubuntu Linux environment running in a container right here on our Windows machine. We can run Linux commands like ls-al to see the file system. When you're done, just type exit. Okay, this is a huge milestone. We've successfully run containers from PowerShell. If you're finding this guide helpful, take a second to hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel and helps others find this video. Now, stick around, because what's coming next is the reason this setup is a game changer for developers. We're about to bridge the gap and run these same Docker commands directly from our native Ubuntu terminal. So how do we get this same power directly inside our Linux terminal? There's one crucial setting we need to check. Go back to Docker Desktop and click the Settings icon in the top right. From there, navigate to Resources and then WSL Integration. Make sure that Enable Integration with my default WSL distro is turned on. Docker is smart and usually detects your installed distributions, so you should see Ubuntu listed here and enabled. This single checkbox is what connects Docker Desktop to your Linux environment. It's the secret sauce. With that confirmed, let's close the settings and see the magic happen. 
Now for that magic moment. I'm going to open a new terminal, but this time I'm opening my Ubuntu distribution that I installed via WSL. Because we just confirmed that WSL integration is enabled, I can type docker-version directly in my Linux terminal. And it just works. This means I can run all my Docker commands from the comfort of my native Linux shell, even though the Docker engine itself is managed by Docker Desktop. Let's try Docker Run Hello World again. Notice how this time it was instant? That's because the image was already downloaded. This creates an incredibly powerful and seamless workflow for any developer. And there you have it. In just a few minutes, we successfully installed Docker on Windows, confirmed it was working by running both a test container and an interactive Ubuntu container, and enabled the WSL integration for a perfect development setup. You are now ready to start building and containerizing your own applications.